giving a quick introduction of Harish and Bina Shah Foundation from and what they do from my own eyes. Uh, so, you know, they ran a very successful business which uh, Harish sold recently. But I think that's not the story. I, what I have, what what Harish and Binasha have been trying to do to shape the India of tomorrow, and how generous they have been in supporting now 80 causes across the country, or whatever the number is, the large number. Some of them are very small ones. Yeah, so doesn't matter. Number doesn't matter. But I think in our interactions with Harish and Bina, not, what stood out was their deep desire to really, really make a difference on the ground. Their deep desire uh, to give a lot of what they have benefited from in their lifetime, which is not common still in India, right? There are not too many exemplars of people who've really set such an audacious goal. And the boldness with which they've really backed some truly fledgling initiatives. So I think uh, I've met many people, and I would unbashedly say that I think what they're doing right now is truly the best in the country in terms of setting the tone for philanthropy. Yep, I mean, that just... What, what makes it phenomenal is they're very gracious and almost understated about it, right? That really feels, it just makes it feel that much extra special. So really, it's a privilege uh, that you're here with us. It's a privilege that you've chosen to uh, make this contribution to Plaksha. Uh, we've already heard about the world of AI. Uh, but what I wanted to start with is, if I ask you a few questions, Harish, maybe begin with you. Uh, you've obviously supported many causes. Uh, what endeared you? about this cause of both Plaksh, supporting Plaksha and AI at Plaksha, if I can, whichever order you want to say that, if you could share a little bit about that, and we, let's get started with that. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so firstly, I have to say that Neeraj is a little extra generous with his compliments. So take that lightly. It's really an honor, and more than that, a privilege here to be amongst you. Uh, while this really remarkable and groundbreaking Institute of AI is being uh, set up. So deeply inspired by all the founders who have already done a lot of work. What we see in front of you is, is the result, the culmination of I think many years of, I'm sure a lot of frustration, a lot of many roadblocks, etc. But despite all that, you guys have got this running. So like, Bini always invests in startups. I think we are coming in at a much later stage when things are already on the move. So to that extent, it's a far safer journey. So really, truly happy to be here at, the, at, this, at this moment. About your question, why AI and why Plaksha? I think after what Mr. Subramaniam said, I need not say anything more about AI and, and its importance and its relevance. Right from everything that he said to Mr. Deepak Parekh also composing a poem on AI. <laughs> so I, I think it's, it's really all encompassing. It is something that is, that is a part of our daily lives. So I think it's in the natural scheme of things that uh, as a foundation that really, uh, we, we do a lot of causes, but education of course is, 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 is a large part of it. And then it, it's a natural, uh, natural inevitable conclusion that AI is to be supported because that is the future. Now why Plaksha? I think it's a rhetorical question because Plaksha is really at the, f at the forefront of everything innovative. The engineering college that they've set up, the kind of multidisciplinary programs that they've envisioned. So I think it's, it's a no-brainer to say that if at all an AI college of this, of, with this aspiration and ambition is to be set up, then it is Plaksha and thus Plaksha. All right. Thank you, Harish, for that. Very encouraging. Bina, I'm going to come to you. Uh, one of the things in the discussion which endeared, I heard Plaksha to you, and you have to tell us if that's the case, was that we were reimagining engineering education and this intersection of technology, liberal arts, and societal impact, if I could say that, was this mixture really struck a chord. So tell us a little bit about it from your vantage point. Good afternoon, everyone. And I think, first of all, Neeraj, you really have been very generous with your compliments. 
Uh, I just want to, before I answer his question, I just want to say that this is my first visit to Plaksha, and it has been a very delightful morning so far. Uh, not just going around and seeing what this university is and where it is headed, also to meet the students, the faculty, the founders, and to hear such words of wisdom that we have been fortunate today to hear. Um, so coming to your question, yes, I think it's extremely important that you have AI, and you have liberal arts. Uh, both are very essential in today's world. Uh, AI, of course, it's a great, great tool, and we, we've talked a lot about it. I mean, apart from the fact that, uh, you know, you can uh, have access to education and, and bring it to the marginalized communities, uh, and, and that way support the more uh, uh, equality and... Uh, but I think that with technology, which can be either black or white, I think it's very important for the students to also understand the in-between shades of gray. And I think that's where uh, an exposure to liberal arts is, 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 comes in very, very in a handy and an important way. Uh, it, it helps not only critical thinking, but also it gives a holistic view, a solution to a very complex problems. So it's important that the students don't just have the knowledge, but also are equipped with the values, which will make them more empathetic, more uh, understanding of the other person, and you know, they're able to solve those complex problems. For example, without knowing your past, you don't understand your present. So history comes, it's, it's, that's the importance of history. So similarly, I think these values in today's world are extremely important because AI can also be a dangerous tool if it is not used in a very responsible manner. So that, that, that's a little message for all those bright, excited students that make sure you use this tool effectively, but also in a very responsible manner. Well said, Bina. And, uh, you know, I, probably to both of you, you've done, you've supported many causes, right? As I said, the numbers are large in education, in art, in history, in many places. Uh, you know, what's, give us some example of what has been fulfilling for you in, in, in those. You can tell a story or you can just give a flavor of what is fulfilling, whatever. Just give us some uh, learned experiences from those. So I'll give you this, which has always been uh, very close to me. Many, many years back when we, uh, you know, when our company was still in its formative years, and when we had office boys. So then I used to hear some people say, you know, these people are so loyal to me, you know, three generations of people have been with me. The first father was a driver, his grandfather was a driver. And I thought it was really so horrible because there's no progress, you know, there's those guys just continue doing what they're doing. So between Bina and me, we decided that none of our office boys, children, will ever become office boys. So net net very early in our times we kind of made education good english medium english medium as as it is known education accessible to everybody unconditionally and i think that really proved to be a game changer because today i see a lot of our drivers and office boys children somebody is a biotech engineer somebody is a chartered accountant somebody has gone to canada somebody is working as a computer analyst so the amount involved was very small. It was, it was next to nothing. But I think that little bit of, a, of, of sensitivity and understanding intellectually as to what the barrier is, I think made a generational change to a lot of these people. So this, this has been something that I've nurtured in my heart for a long time. I, I come, I, 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 those guys come to meet me today and they're speaking fluent English they're sitting across the table and having a cup of coffee with me. Sometimes the coffee is still served by the father because the father is still there. But that's how it's been normalized. 
So this this is a personal uh, favorite of. of oh. You know, you want to add something? I think uh, when when we support uh, big institutions, of course, the impact is is uh, very high and far-reaching. Uh, but somewhere you are not in touch with the actual receivers of this or, you know, those reports come later on. But it's when you do individual, uh, like you are dealing with an individual and helping that person even in a small way, like supporting during COVID, there were a few people, vegetable vendors, etc. And when I read those stories, then decided to help uh, the kids. Uh, you know, whose, whose father was a journalist and he dies in COVID and this girl wants to do medical or there is another girl who wants to, uh, you know, study and complete her graduations and work. So these give you, uh, bring you a lot more gratification because you see them in front of you and uh, you actually uh, see that, that happiness in their eyes and then you feel you've done something right. No, and I want to tell you a personal story on the, uh, I think two weeks back, you were in Madhya Pradesh or three weeks back when I was talking to you, they'd done a tour of Gwalior, Orcha and many places in Madhya Pradesh and I happened to talk to uh, Harisha one morning and uh, Kavita, you will know this, I, I some because he was in Madhya Pradesh, I said there is a batchmate of ours who does work primarily in Madhya Pradesh, which is Chandrika, and she's focused on maternal health in Madhya Pradesh. And he said, Batao, Batao, I want to support that cause as well. So he was like, literally, you know, it, it was, you know, the desire to support noble causes at speed is something it just really stood out. We were talking at what, seven in the morning? And I was, you know, we were just, we were talking about doing something on what we'll do on this day, but suddenly we started talking about this cause in Madhya Pradesh. So that just shows, how gracious they have been and that really memory stays stays vivid in my mind Harish when I uh, recount uh, how gracious you've been. So one more thing you know this is we talked about the good part but what have been some of the challenges in scaling right and let's also talk about the tough part. It's one thing to give money but I'm sure everything has not probably planned up panned out as you planned or is it maybe too early or what worries you maybe we come to that side. Maybe I'll let Bina answer that one, but before that, may I add one more, one more please, small please. story? Yeah, yeah. So, um, when we sold our company, we were wondering how to reward all our colleagues, all, all the people that worked in the company. Because, you know, as much as we started the company, etc., we were one more player. Everybody in the company had played a role in its evolution, in its growth. So, in the end, how do you really recognize and reward that contribution. So a long story short, what we did was the same multiple that we got for our EBITDA, we took all the regular employees, not the very new ones, we took their annual package and we gave them the same multiple. That is remarkable. That is remarkable. So, so and the kind of, the kind of, I we so many came with tears in their eyes that Sir, because of this, I paid off my parents' loan. My parents' loan. Because I'm married and I, my parents are alone and they're living. So, there were so many chota 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 stories. And then you realize that it's such a small part of what you've given. You know, you, we, we all tend to think we're doing big noble things. In, in reality, we are not. I think no matter what we do, the inequality is so big that it's still not enough. But then we try our level best to see how to bridge that gap without disrupting it too much either. So I think that's, that's another small thing which I would like to really tell all entrepreneurs when they make this kind of big, you know, unicorns and big monies, make sure all the people that have worked with you are also a part of that success and that reward. I see some very successful people sitting in the stage and they were really appreciative when you told the story. I could see it in their body language, right? That is genuinely remarkable. Genuinely, that's at a, a very, very high bar. About challenges, she looks at the finance, <laughs> so you answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, there are challenges because we are, uh, you know, dealing with very different kind of uh, organizations from very small to medium to large. Uh, scalability is an issue as to how do you monitor and see. I wish Amira was here to, to give a, a, a much more detailed answer. But uh, 
In fact, that's one of the things that we advise the organizations that we are not here looking for scalability. You know, we want that you find your footing, you resolve any kind of issues that you may have, whether it is your HR issue or even your office related or, so we are very flexible and we are very open in our funding and uh, I think that is really helping a lot of the small and medium organizations so that they are not pulled to just meet the demands of the donors and then sometimes they lose focus of what they actually want to do. So, and, and also I believe that um, uh, we are in the process of setting up uh, very detailed processes and expanding the team. So. I hope we will soon have better answers for that. You but want yeah, to add something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So two challenges. One is also kind of trying to get hold of large organizations because sometimes, you know, you want to tackle the top of the pyramid. You really want to support organizations that are going to make a large difference because small, small, there are plenty. Well, they also need support. But I think challenges in finding large ones. And the final one is also sometimes the challenge is to say no. When you're not convinced about the organization's capabilities or how sustainable it's going to be, after the well-meaning founders, as, as well-meaning they would be, but there's no succession plan, so what's going to happen to the organization, etc. afterwards? So these kind of things are sometimes an issue, and then saying no is always a little bit hard because you disappoint people. But other than that, I think if your intent is there, you will find the right organizations. I think that's where one has to uh, really approach this sector with head and heart. Just one doesn't work, you know. It's, it's very important uh, that both are in its place. You're doing head, heart and hands. <laughs> you know, so I think that's just, uh, but that's very well said. Can I, uh, what advice will you give Plaksha at this stage of the journey? I know that's a, maybe anything that, it's hard to give advice to all you guys. You guys are really champs in your, in your space. I think so far whatever we're seeing is extremely encouraging. So the whole thing is to keep up the momentum, not to get complacent, keep raising more funds because I think funds is the starting point to really building infrastructure. Keep good partnerships going because I think AI is, you, you cannot work as an island. You will need to connect. You will need to get talent. So focus on really getting good faculty and let the students really have a very good, open, free, with full of freedom to be bold and to be innovative. So a combination of all those things uh, with a long-term perspective in mind. So. Mean anything from your side? I, I have no advice for Plaksha and the people involved, but if I have to, I might, I would like to just leave a message for the students uh, that, you know, AI is a, is a wonderful tool, how you are going to use effectively. When you, when you are doing that, think of India not just as the urban problems, but look at the rural India. That's what is the major India is. And I think seeing those problems and if you can find solutions there, that would be great contribution to this country. Those are very wonderful and sage advice. I'll bring this to a wrap, but I wanted to give you a sense of the uh, commitment they've made and to quantify that in the context of India. So Harish and Bina Shah have committed 100 crores to the School of AI. The reason I... I, I say this for two reasons. One is we wanted to dream big. And you know, uh, in this, to get the best minds is not easy, you know, the challenges. And this allows us the freedom to dream big. And second, I wanted to put this in context. Uh, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman, when she announced the budget a little while back, she announced a gracious gift for AI. And you know, they cross all IITs. And the gift she announced was 500 crores. So I just wanted to put what they have done for Plaksha in that context. This is really remarkable. Thank you very, very much.